government which does not waste the people's money. That is essentially necessary for having a lean government. Has this been achieved in the last 18 years? Get to know Guyana's peership. Plan for a better today. Together we will. Thank you for joining us once again. Um, I'm Peter Ramsroop. Welcome. Thank you for, if you're sitting in your living room or around the world watching us on live on the internet, welcome. We look forward to a very good discussion today and two key topics. One being the literacy that we are struggling with in our nation. And, you know, when you think of our children and the future of our next generation, it's a, it's a critical subject for all of us to be part of that discussion. And then in the last half of the program, we'll switch to uh, a national defense uh, discussion. We've had many major issues uh, in terms of the future of where our national assets, uh, national economy is going. Uh, so those are the two topics for today as we discuss the future of our country and where we would like to see it here today and for tomorrow. The discussion as we, over the last couple of, uh, we have talked a lot about the automatic promotion system uh, that the Ministry of Education has as a policy in our school system. Uh, we have had many debates uh, in, the, in the public, in the newspapers, political parties, civil society, even school headmasters and, and teachers have brought that to light that it's a failed system. And today I have with me uh, from our last program, Jane Stort, who is a teacher by trade. Uh, she is also a university student studying public management and education, and has been part of the system in trying to teach younger students, especially grade three, grade four, on the basics of, of the curriculum. And, you know, in speaking to her, when you see some of the issues that she was faced with in the, in the classroom. Many of these students were not even eligible to be in grade three or grade four, but they got there because of this automatic promotion system. Eric Phillips, a well-known uh, civil activist uh, uh, working with the community, has been really pushing for a national conversation on the literacy issue that we have in our nation. And Jane, why do you believe that, that we really must have this national conversation on, on illiteracy? Well, first of all, what is it that the public needs to know? What is literacy and illiteracy? For a child to be illiterate, that child it doesn't have the ability to read. Now, for a nation now to keep promoting these children from one stage to the next, but where, where, where are they going? They are going to go through the, the education system now as illiterates and when they come out now from that system say the primary system they cannot enter the secondary system now eric phillips now he is calling for a national conversation on literacy and he has set out some very uh some very good points on which the the conversation should stand on first of all we should not throw blame as the ministry uh, stated in today's Stabrook newspaper that teachers are to blame. Secondly, we should put out strategies strategies there now that, sh uh, that are workable, work options to deal with these literates. And, and we, sh we should analyze the problem closely. But you mentioned that the ministry came out today talking, defending their failed policy. Uh, in, in my mind, they should have spent all that time and energy maybe advocating for this national conversation to take place. I mean, yeah. go back on that automatic promotion system that, especially in Linden, we talked about it in the last program. You know, that headmaster was very bold in coming out saying that he's not going to do that. What are the implications? You, you kind of alluded to that. What are the implications of this student going from grade to grade? What happens? I mean, I, I read uh, on, online the other day that 17 percent of the people applying to the Ghana Defense Force, and we're going to talk about defense strategy at the end of the program, the last half of the program, only 17 percent. Yes. Of barely made, made the read and write. 
can read and write. Right. So, so what are we producing? It is showing you now what we are producing. Now, in order for our country to, de to develop, we need to have educated people. So that that is one problem there we are facing. Uh, why why we're still trying to develop now? What is it that that we should all do now to 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 assess this situation here now to put out solutions there? The ministry they are they are keeping they are proposing interventions to assist these these failed students. Now you cannot keep on proposing these interventions. You need to go into the schools and find out exactly from teachers. You need to sit down in the classroom and be there yourself to, to kind of get a feel of what is it like to sit in a class of 30 remedial pupils. Now, during the August break, for example, they do have some of those remedial uh, classes but from what i've seen and what you have seen only a few students show up is that an economic issue parents don't want to get involved how, how do we how do we again create this national urgency in order for us to create that national urgency to have the children to come out there now for the remediation out of a class of 25 pupils a remedial class of 25 pupils. I have witnessed two pupils from that 25 turn up for, for the remediation. What is it telling us there? Are we to blame the teachers? Are we to blame the parents? Who are we to blame? Everyone is to blame. You cannot blame just the teachers. The ministry is blatantly doing. We need to blame Dainese. All of us need to come out now and step out. Stand up for these children. But I've been pushing a lot uh, on our platform on the economics. If you look at um, our economy today, the average public servant makes anywhere from 28,000 a police officer to a teacher at 60,000 for a trained teacher, those that are not fully trained, less. Parents on a whole that are struggling to survive, when, when now that child is home on the August holidays or Christmas holidays, they can't afford to put the, they're glad for that child to be home because yeah. they can't afford the transportation, they can't afford the extra clothes that they have to find to send them to remediation, lunch, lunch and all those things. So I think economics is playing a significant problem with, with the literacy issue we, we're struggling with. Yeah, and uh, five, the additional 5% increase that the government has declared for public servants is ridiculous because that 5% uh, increase now that 5% taxable <laughs> increase is ridiculous because after you finish uh, putting out all the taxes, taking out all the taxes from that 5%, what is left there? $1,000 people wake up. We cannot uh, celebrate Christmas with $1,000. But, uh, but <laughs> and, and I, I'm surprised that I've not seen the unions, the unions. or the stand up. You're right, if you're getting 5% pay raise as a teacher that would have made $60,000, you know, 5% is about 3,000, you take a 33% taxes, 5.6% NIS, you spend 16% on your VAT when you go buying your Christmas presents, that's less than probably even $1,000. Yeah, it's ridiculous, and people are just sitting there idle by and they're taking all of these. But that's where I stand, I mean, and that's what, one thing about uh, on our program here. We, in uh, this program is together we will, we've got to stand up, Jane, and says, these are things we cannot accept. The fact is, we want our students to do better. We want them to have a better future, to be able to take care of me and you and, and others as we get older. Those, the government is taking 60% more in, in, in bad taxes over the last three, four years. Why not put it back into the school system? So that student now that, according to the automatic promotion system, goes into grade three from grade four. Now, when you were teaching grade four, you had 15 students that maybe were up to par, five maybe right below par, and 10 way below par. How did that affect your ability to teach the 15 that were, were at par and where they need to be? Well, number one, we cannot decrease, um, we cannot cut.